when I was asked to do a tutorial on curator searches, I went to my PDF and realized that there's still very good content on all these videos. So what I did is I, I rearranged them in a more logical order. And I'm creating this video in here, which is the introduction. So if you follow this list of videos, you're going to be pretty good doing searches in Curator. So let's get started. When you go into an offense, and here is the in the new UI, and, and you look at, for example, at the particular uh, logs or events that are in the, uh, you, and you are presented uh, those events, and you have the AQL search in here, and they say, well, I want to see what else this 74 address is actually doing. Well, you need to do some searches, and you can do it from the offense. This is the new the, the new UI. This is a traditional view, or you can go into log activity tab, like here or network activity tab, right? Now, by the way, I'm shortening here the addresses because I don't want to reveal the, the, the addresses that are in this uh, system that I'm working in. The, the simplest way of making searches in Curator is with pivoting on filters, and you only have that in the traditional UI. I don't think that, is, at least for now, in the new UI, you can do the same thing. But if I post this uh, sequential barrage of uh, flows that I'm getting here in this demo system. Uh, you can actually go into any one of the columns and you can do things like, for example, I'm not interested in port 443, so I can go ahead and right click here and say put a filter where the destination port is not 443. And of course you can say if you only want the 443, you do the otherwise. So when I do this and I click back on play, you're going to see that no new 443 events are, are going to be coming because I have that filter. Well, this search that I'm doing is what falls into the category of basics of aerial searches, right? These are the GUI, simple GUI searches uh, to be done. And uh, of course, I can add more filters in here by right clicking and say, well, and when the, the protocol is uh, only UDP, right? And then that filter gets added, so when I go there, only those components are uh, going to be showing up. You not only have to add filters by pivoting in here, you can actually, let me post it again. And of course, you don't need to have it in real time. If you want to go back in time, you go here and select the time frame where you want to see those. Uh, in this particular case, flows, but it's the same on, on, on logs. You can add additional filters that are not in the columns in here by clicking here, Add Filter. And you can put any condition that you want. Things that, so that let's say that I want to search for uh, all the flows that contribute to an offense. So if I put here the word offense, notice that the look ahead say, oh, oh, you mean associated with offense equal true? And you add that filter, and then only those events that contributed to that offense will be shown. Uh, if you want to look for the payload. What do I mean by the payload? Uh, let me actually go back to the logs because this, this payload content concept is uh, related to not the payload of the TCP IP traffic but the payload of the actual log. So if we go to this, uh, for example, this squid uh, log, we see that this is what is called the payload. So if I want to look for any payload that contains the word connect, and this is an expensive search and more on the performance and all that coming later in this video, but I just copy that and I can return to the event list and I can add a filter and the filter can be, if I put the word payload, I'm going to find one that payload contains. Yeah, that's an, and it's not a regular expression, but it's a basic expression, and I'm going to put here. And if you want to make this more general, you can put any of, of if you know, any one of these contain. If you don't want anyone that has no value, that has the NA, they're not available, uh, then you select those conditions. So you see how you can easily pivot on it. And they say, I'm going to go back in time for the last uh, 30 minutes. And that search is going to produce only those events that has the word that, that, word that we were looking for.
So we saw that in the squid event, but it's here and uh, in also in this other one. Yep, uh, we find that word there. Now, I came across to this uh, uh, presentation from Jack Radigan from IBM, and he actually put some very good content in here. In fact, I'm putting a PDF version of this presentation in the box folder link is, as you know, in the video description of all my videos uh, under Jack Radigan uh, folder. You, you're going to get this. There's a good content that I don't want to, I don't have the time to cover them all in here, right? Let's talk a little bit about the performance of the search. If the property that you are looking for, the filter that you are filtering on, is indexed, and you know that it's indexed because you have that thing between brackets, so important things like source IP, destination IP, all those things are indexed. But there are very many that are not. So for example, if we look to that payload contained, we we will actually, if, I don't know if you noticed it before, if we put pay, I cannot type well, payload contained, notice that the, the bracket uh, is not here. Obviously, you cannot index for every word that exists on the payload. What that means is that that search is going to be more expensive in terms of CPU cycles on it. The other thing that is important to mention is that when you expand this uh, twisty here, the current statistics, you are going to get uh, the performance that the search actually took. And I, in my subsequent videos, I go in more details and, and show more examples of that. So that's important in terms of the basic of aerial searches that you do uh, by either going in here or, or pivoting on the column and adding in there. But there is another search that is like the Google-like, and again, there's a dedicated video on it called the quick filter. And in fact, it's one of the, f it's the first, when, when you, let me actually cancel here. When you go and add a filter the f for the first time, the first option that you get in here is, is actually quick filter, right? So you can actually put it in here, or you can uh, notice that the only option is matches, or you can just go here and put it right there. There's an option for advanced searches, which are the SQL like the AQL one, and then it's a dedicated video comes along with that. And you don't have to search on just quick filters or aerial. Uh, filters, but you can actually combine them. So, for example, let's say I'm, I don't I don't care about these cell metrics. These are internal log messages that Curator uh, sends to itself uh, for performance. So here you, we we have then filter, and then let's say that I want to put only the ones that have API, right? So I put the word here API on the quick filter and hit search, and then I'm combining a quick filter for API and if aerial standard filter search that that's excludes everything that is held metric and in Jack Radigan's presentation you can get some important notes about the filters and how you put you know uh, wildcards and you know, when you put things that have a space in between uh, you can do it with regular expression and I have a video that shows all, all that and how you escape characters and the characters that need to be escaped You'll learn more of that when you move on on the other videos. Another thing I like from Jack's presentation is that uh, he shows here the properties that are for logs and flows uh, indexed by default. But that doesn't mean that you need to, you cannot index, or actually even on the on in that that would not be very wise to on, on, on index the ones that are by default. But you can additional properties. Uh, should be indexed for performance to get better search and how do you know when you actually need that then you need to go here to the index management let's actually do that in our system uh, you go here into the admin tab and here on index management is where you we get uh, that specific view and, and the important thing is to make sure that the things that are searched the most have actually been indexed and as you see i have some custom properties here that are indexed meaning that th these are not even standard properties in it and I have that uh, in this in my system for better uh, better performance so the idea is to make sure that uh, that 
the, the, this percentage of miss index uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't show here. For example, this one is something that <laughs> I may want to consider indexing because notice that I get a hundred percent missing. That doesn't mean that you're not going to find it. It's, it's, it's gonna, it means that the the search is not going to be as impressively performance and normal normal searches are in curator when things are indexed and Jack even put some practical recommendations in here for you to follow so this video has reached the 10 minute mark that I like to put myself on any video but again follow this list and you are going to be a master searching in curator in a very short period of time